Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are continuing work on the catamaran. Now this is a hull that was given to me by Sheppy Fives and it's an amazing hull. I then gutted it and refinished it with my own microcontrollers that I've been developing for a while for OMA and added some of the tech. Now it still is a work in progress. You can see there's some microcontrollers there on the roof that I've been working on recently. And I've added the CFI 2R on the back of the boat. If we go here into the workbench, what I want to show you first is these, this system here that I developed ends up switching the uh, channels and gives you kind of a little touchscreen interface. This one here is just a four feed camera touchscreen system. Again, now that I've kind of learned how to develop touchscreens, I find it quite fun, albeit uh, a little unrewarding in terms of the time it takes building a code versus the time it takes to, you know, build a ship like this, but build it once and I could reuse it. So actually what I want to show you first is this system that I developed. If we sit here in the bridge, turn this TV on, we get our display here. Now if we press auto, it will actually cycle through the feeds of the camera cycling the ship kind of like a security camera system it just goes through the various feeds that are presented here you could also turn off auto mode and if you turn it off it just stays put on one and then you can manually rotate through them through, through the feeds if you don't want to use the cctv anymore say you want to do the lidar you press that and here you have now the lidar system where you could actually go into scanning if you don't want to do that you can go to sonar and use this so it gives you a wide variety of different interfaces and things to do and of course the colors there match the colors of the dashboard that's intentional i want it to kind of fit in together at least a little bit on the back of the vessel here i did end up doing some adjustments with the railing system and with the connectors because of course the connectors previously were in the same line as the sliding track, meaning how do you put a sliding track and then block it with a connector. So I wanted to have a continuous track and now you can fully uh, utilize that. And I gone ahead and done this change to both uh, CFI versions. So now rather than being attached there, it's gonna be attached here. It just allows for much faster deployment then if we take a look here at, on the side i've added two toggle buttons because of course if you're trying to uh, dis disconnect the rov you want to disconnect the gripper the electric connectors without disconnecting the gripper rails so the way that it works if we jump over here so you'll disconnect the electric connectors and at that point you can just push it down the sliding tracks now, of course, we didn't turn it on, so it will kind of float around until it's at least activated and synced with the ship. But that's an easy process as well. You can just go over here and turn on the RC mode. Now it's set to frequency 1. And if we wake, make our way into the little workbench here, turn this on and turn that on to frequency 1. Now it's attached, and now of course you have the ability to control it, you know, side to side and all that good stuff. So that is a system that is fully in place. I did do some cleanup of the interior and added a little berth area with two beds. Obviously this boat is not meant for large scale operations and long term like kind of projects, but what it does allow you to do is take it out a bit longer than the usual just um, day trips so if you have a bed here are the latest versions of the ROVs and actually what I did do is move the breaker down here on both of them because that's less important and then I put the disconnect buttons on the rear rather than on the side so it just makes for a much easier sort of deploying process of course, for this one that is wireless, I do still have that there. I was debating putting it back here, but just in order to keep it as clean as possible, I don't really mind it being there. Now, there were some interesting comments that people 
on my Discord server and on the YouTube have been mentioning, which now we're going to implement because it does make more sense to try to minimize what channels we're on and allow the ROVs to communicate on channels that are free rather than to get interference with existing systems and gantries and things and people trying to communicate. So with that in mind, I'm going to adjust the channels in here. This is actually news to me. I had no idea you could use negative frequencies. So in this case, now what I did is just put a negative. So even if it's showing frequency three on the ROV, actually it's negative 16 and negative 17. And likewise, on our station here, if I set it to three, it accesses this and again, negative 17, negative 16. So now we're really not going to interrupt any of the existing communication channels. So I don't know if this is a glitch or if it is intentional, but now we have negative frequency to use this on. So thank you to those users and that user that actually given me this suggestion. I do appreciate it and it'll make a much cleaner system actually. One other neat fix that I want to do here is in regards to the battery. Now currently the system I have dictates that when the battery gets to a certain point, here I have it between uh, 1 and 30, it will actually, or whatever, 0 0.01. The reason I didn't put 0 is in case it is a version with no battery. So if it, as long as it has a battery of some kind, and it's not fully dead, it will be doing this. But anyways, it turns on a transponder if it is between 0 and 30%. And in addition to that, it goes over here and it will flash the headlights. So every 0.5 seconds, it'll flash the headlights. So if it is down, stuck somewhere, you can hopefully find it if you use another ROV, if you go diving, if you use a mini sub. But there was actually another interesting suggestion that was brought to me. And it said, why doesn't the sub, the ROV auto surface if it hits a very low, um, a very low threshold. So that is a great idea. And what I'll do is add a little part of the code here saying, so right now we have, if the our radio mode is true and the battery is less than 30%, then tell us warning low battery. Now, what I'm going to do is add another expression saying else if the, um, RC is true and the battery is less than 10%, let's call it, it will now start to rise up for us. So we'll put that here and actually to fix the coding, I'm just going to move this above because that same color applies to both expressions. And then we'll end it. Obviously, we think we need another end here in order to end that first expression and the second. And what in addition to that now, it's telling us an error on 125. So else if this, then this, I just have to add an if here. So else if the RC is true and the battery is less than 10%, then we want this to happen. So I don't want both to happen at the same time, meaning I don't want it to be telling it me low battery twice. And what I do want to do is change this to say auto surface, low battery, auto surfacing. So now with that little message coming on, we just have to adjust these here and tell my coding program to, to, to try this out for me. So to do that, I just kind of fake that it's already on. So we're going to adjust that later. And then I'm going to set this here. And we're telling you right now that if the RC mode is true, and the battery is less than 10. So I just have to go check up here. The battery is on number 13. So my number 13 here, there we go. So now that message appears there, which is fine. Granted, I do want the message to also appear if we end up with, um, I just want to make sure that they don't end up showing at the same time. So we're going to put false here and we're going to put false here. Give this a little trial run. So if we're at 20%, so for 40, nothing, if we're at 30 warning, low battery, and if we hit 10, it should take over that function, but it's not happening. So the other function isn't activated. 
there a little bit of editing here so now we have it set to if rc is false and battery is thir between 30 percent and 10 then low battery if it is false and less than 10 it tells us auto surfacing so if i adjust this here telling it it's 100 percent battery we're good if we hit here 30 and what i will do actually is even add a little equal sign here because i want it to actually come on when it's 30 not when it's 29 so if it's 30 low battery and it keeps going down if it's 10 it changes say low battery auto surfacing that now stays on and only comes on if that's the case now what i do have to do is bring this back to true i was just kind of using this to test out the code i know i could also set a boolean here and tell it true and false and stuff but this is just faster for me and up here offline is equal to zero so if everything's zero then in fact we are fully offline since i've exceeded the map minimum or maximum number of text i'm going to change this to remove this warning and now it'll just read low battery auto surfacing so it's not no longer a warning now it's an actual movement and we're just shy which can easily be fixed by removing some of these comments. For example, we don't really need the comments. They don't add anything to the code. And there you have it. Everything we just did was on the ship end or call it the control center end. Now we have to actually adjust the ROV itself. And the first thing that I want to show you is this expression here. So what happens is the battery outputs between zero and one. So 50% is actually 0.5, of course. So it'll go into this clamp and it will keep it in the positive range. And this expression that I've developed is to trick our control center into thinking we actually have a lower battery than we really do. So you can see here, I've taken the actual, uh, so from one all the way down to zero, and I've applied my little formula here and really when the ROV is at around 30% or telling us it's at 30%, it's actually at 50. And that's through trial runs. I found that after like 0.2% or 0.2 or 20% of its actual battery, it pretty much shuts down. It can no longer function. So these negative numbers don't mean anything to us. This is a useless, like it'll already be dead by that point. So at this relationship here, what we're telling it now is we get an error warning when we're at 50% of our actual battery and then we get it auto surfacing. We said when it hits that 10% mark. So when it hits around 30%, it will start to auto surface. Now that may not be enough. We may have to actually adjust it to be like 15% or whatever, but this is the approximate relationship. So back here, you could see that this is reading off the actual battery. So we're hitting that 0.3% and that's when the transponder comes on, but really that's when the thing should be auto surfacing at that 30 or 40%, it's already in big trouble. Now, in order to make sure that we match the other system that we did on the actual control center, where we told it to auto surf or to tell us the warning of auto surfacing at a different call it level if I just find the Lua so here it's telling us to auto surface if it's less than 10 but really maybe I need to change that to 15 so let's just go with 15 whatever 15 percent of the number that it's telling us that's when we need to auto surface so I'm gonna go ahead and save and adjust that just so we make sure to have the latest version and then back here in this microcontroller so now what's happening is at that 15 percent that means it's 15 coming out of this expression not this one so i can put a threshold and say here if the battery that we're you know telling the computer is between a high of 15 because now we're using whole numbers we've multiplied it here by 100 so if we're using between 15 percent and here, this negative part, remember, because we're using all the way down to negative, even though this clamp is going to force it into being a positive, I still want to make sure that I'm utilizing that. Now, the one tricky part with pulling this number out from here 
is that if our battery is actually reading a zero because there is no battery, meaning we're using a system that does not have a remote controlled unit, this expression here would not work. But that's where the second expression comes in, where we can just take an AND and take it from this, because we know that this one is pulling out of the actual battery. So this one is telling us or telling the controller if it's, you know, if there is a battery and it is between this value. And then here we're saying, you know, if it is this alternatively, what I could have done is put it onto the RC mode. So if the RC mode is on, that would that could have been attached to this one too. Like if RC mode is on, then um, do this. But anyways, this here is going to now turn on when we are at 15% of our battery that we're telling ourselves and when we actually have a battery that's low. And then this one is now going to be attached to a system that we continue on somewhere down here. This part of the code is what feeds the vertical thrusters. And this one here specifically is the one that brings in the value coming from our left and right arrow keys, which is to bring it up and bring it down. So what I can do is hijack this line here, right here, and put a numerical switch box that takes it out of this stream, puts it into the off, and connects it into here. And then our on value, meaning when it is trying to auto surface, when we have these issues, when it's low battery, it will automatically put a one value into this expression, which will then be translated in here as if we are putting it manually through our arrow keys. In addition to that, we're going to want to disable our throttle. So when it is this low battery mode and it's kind of bringing itself back up, we put our throttle to zero. We can no longer control it. We lose the ability to have a throttle and I may want to keep the steering just so you can still kind of help it come back up. Like if you've ever flown a drone, you could still do adjustments even when it is auto landing. So it may be useful to keep some of these adjustments, but it'll have to be done in a trial run where I test out these features and see if they work. Also doing a trial run here, I did lose communication with the ROV. It went too far the signal strength dropped down to zero. So I will put another error message or warning message that we're losing signal and to turn back. That's also going to be imperative here to make sure that we don't end up losing the thing like this. In addition to that, if we do lose the um, chat, if we do lose contact, I want it to turn on the transponder mode, it's going to have full batteries. So that's fine. But it wouldn't be bad at that point to surface as well and to turn on the transponder. So that is coming from here. So this is telling the thing it's on. So channel 10. And that's where we end up telling the uh, control station whether we have contact with it or not. So I've added in a function if we're trying to send the radio, meaning if we've enabled it on the ROV itself, but if we're not receiving the on signal from the control center, then turn on the transponder, turn on the lights, all that shebang. Do I want it to auto surface or do you want to wait until you position yourself somewhere closer until you can gain contact? That's, you know, to be determined. But I guess I could do that where I put it here, meaning if you do have these arguments true, or if you have these arguments true, that's when it stops steering. Obviously, you're going to have lost contact, so you're not going to be steering anyways. But then it's going to do this, which is the more important one, meaning it's going to auto surface. So this is going to actually test out our auto surface capabilities here. On the ship composite side of things or the control center, this is where I now have to add the signal. So radio signal strength. And this is going to tell us if we're losing communication with the ROV or not. Now this is the auto surfacing mode. Note I didn't connect it to our <laughs> control station, but rather I connected it to the, I just turned on the uh, mode that tells it it's on. So we obviously need it to stop working. 
or stop trying to lift it if we've reached the surface. Now, to be honest, that's a useful thing to have for both modes, even if you're trying to manually do it, because if you're trying to manually do it that high, it's going to start to glitch out and you're going to get nothing good come from it. So that may even have to be down here where this expression or this kind of node gets adjusted such that if we are trying to manually do it or if we're trying to auto surface, it goes here, but it doesn't go here just yet. It only goes down here or goes to the actual motors. If we're trying to do these things, in addition to if it is already, if it's below the surface of the water. Now there are several ways to do it. I could put a threshold and so if it kind of goes that way, or I could just put a numerical switch box telling it if it's on the off path, it continues on here. If it's on the on path, meaning that we've already reached our surface, then it just goes to zero. So we have an altimeter on the bottom of the ROV and it may be some trial and error because I don't want it to actually end up um, surfacing. Obviously zero is the surface of the water, so we're fine to keep it at a lower threshold. So it only turns on, meaning is if the altitude or altimeter is hitting, let's call it a high of negative one, and then a low is like whatever. Well, no, actually, sorry, other way around. If our lowest value is one and our highest can be whatever, this thing is never going to obviously go to 999. But in theory, if the altimeter now hits negative one, it turns this path on and it stops this from going up any further. If we go underwater, we could see that our altimeter now is point, negative 0.78 or something. So this is a good depth. So I think if we turned on RC mode now, it won't automatically want to push itself any higher than this. If we jump on it or stand on it, we might be able to drop it down a little lower, or if I put a weight, for example, and then we'd be able to see. See? Yeah, so it did bring it to the surface. So that seems to be the perfect number. Back on this side of things, you can see that our signal strength now is like 98%, which is good. And it's going out of the one that is receiving data. The one sending data doesn't have a signal strength, so receiving now does. Over here, we can add one more channel, making it channel, so 14, 15, 16. And that will be the radio received. And then in here, our Lua, have to add another um, value. So I've added the signal as the get number 16, and really it'll just be another error message or warning message, just like we have here, similar to this. And all it's gonna tell us is if signal, if SGL is less than 0.3, let's call it, less than or equal to 0.3, then we're gonna start our, it's gonna say warning, and it's gonna say low, poor signal or something. I've added all these things and I've set it up such that now it's making its way away from us. And at 25 or 0.25 signal strength, it should give us an error warning to turn back. So we're gonna do that. And then what I'm gonna do is let the battery drain and see if indeed it does make its way back to the surface. So here we are hitting 29, 24, warning, weak signal, turn back. Okay, and then if we make our way back, so we're rotating around, you can see we're getting quite low, that's actually quite bad. So now it should start to increase. And then when we get a little closer, this message should turn off. That was getting real close. That was getting real close. I mean, I did keep it at full speed. In theory, I could have like put it to a stop and then rotated around or whatever. But that's interesting to know. I may need to have a value down here of the signal strength. Like I said, there could be parts that I continue on forever here. But I do think having a signal strength indicator is important. Especially, if, I mean, it's the second most important thing after the battery when you're trying to operate 
an ROV that is fully wireless. So you can see here, the signal strength is correlated to this received signal indicator, which RSSI, that's kind of geek talk for signal strength. And of course, I'm going to throw a huge antenna on my actual boat. But anyways, this now gives us an idea of how far we are physically distance wise and signal strength. Now, of course, if you turn in, if you use a ROV that is connected to the winch, this and this do not apply and they go away. So I manually turned down the battery on this thing just to see what happens. And you could see that when it hits this low, it goes very slow. Now it's telling us low battery, which is fine. It's even having a struggle going, going any lower here. But at some point, it should kick on that we are fully uh, drained and it should start to bring us back up to the surface. It's going to be a different error message for that. You can see it's still making its way forward there. But soon enough here, is it going to be 20 or 15? I think I may have even put 15, but it should probably be a little sooner than that. I mean, this is already becoming very unresponsive and difficult. And I mean, if you can't tell, you can see that the signal here just even looks terrible. It's quite sluggish. Let's see what happens here. I'm just kind of making circles over there. I need it to get to that lower battery so we can kick on that other mode now we've got the weak signal probably because our radio antenna is also <laughs> struggling here with the low battery so this is now the problem right look at that the the battery the low battery is just draining our signal away so it's a combination of the two that have to be kind of kept in check to make sure that we don't lose the ROV through these type of means. I didn't have, and did in fact have 15, so I'm gonna actually increase that to 20. And at 20, it's gonna just fully go on autopilot and come, come on back home or to the surface. I just have to make sure this is properly adjusted. So for 20 and 20 here, that's gonna make sure that it stays good. Now this, we could even put 35, is when it tells us warning low battery, and then at 20 is when it starts to auto surface. So again, the battery is draining quite fast here because it's uh, coming to the rest of the system that in fact we are quite low. But you could see how just sluggish and terrible it looks. I mean, when you kind of see this, you'd probably want to start making its way back regardless. Anyways, now it's giving us the low warning. Soon enough here at that 20, it will just start to rise, which is kind of my intention. 22, soon enough here. And I'm just keeping it on full throttle ahead, which at that low battery, it's not very fast. It's four knots. But here we're going to hit 20 in a second, and it should start to take over and surface and we're going to watch it surface here on the left hand side i just want to make it hit that last little bit here and that's going to be the moment of truth but overall this system is seeming there we go that oh, weak signal no but this system seems to really make um a lot of sense it seems to me look at that it's dropping off extra extra fast so with that low battery that's where you're just going to lose it oh we're offline Anyway, regardless, we're offline, and the lights are flashing, and it's making its way to the surface. You can see it kind of hit that last little bit of depth. Well, actually, it's not making its way full time, probably because of the low batteries. Anyways, it's trying its best. It's trying its best to surface, and it's trying its best to kind of make itself, bring itself to attention. I made some changes and now that that is done, we are ready to go and load up the new ROV on the vessel here. And that will not only give it the latest version, but it's also going to have all these little safety fallbacks that we just designed. 
the rest of the Alston will really just come down to finishing up the interior, doing some final runs and double checking things, and then the catamaran will be ready for uh, testing with the beta developers squad, the beta tester squad, and after that of course ready to go live for all of you to use. So with this being changed, and I have, I swear, so many versions of this microcontroller, but that is okay. Now this is the latest one. And remember, having better radio antennas will also allow for a much better um, communication. So I may honestly just put these large ones. Now I'm trying not to block the sonar array. But even if they go here, that could look kind of cool. Like right there. And make sure they're white. So those can be there. These ones are no longer needed now. And they'll just get swapped out for these new ones here. And otherwise, that will be it. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more as I develop and finalize this uh, creation. I'm super excited again for this um, build. I know that it's not necessarily a massive build, but I do think that the fact that it has a lot of kind of new technology in it that is going to be implemented in a lot of different places moving forward, I think that's something that we should be excited for. So with that, I'm going to end this video and uh, let you know that I'm excited to see what you all think of this. So thank you for watching, stay tuned for more, and as always, happy stormworksing everyone. <laughs>